What's up, buddy? How you doing, pal? What's going on? What's going on? How's everything, guys? Hey, guys. How you doing? Came to give them the tour. Cool. Yeah, thank you. They, they spent three and a half hours with Frank today. You got some good stories. Yeah. I was just always intrigued and fascinated by tattoos, and it just suddenly popped into my head. And you know, I had like tunnel vision. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I could think about. And I, you know, called different tattoo shops and tried to figure out what approach I would take or what avenue I would take in order to, you know, learn the craft. And um, that's when I went into Da Vinci's and met Frank. This was Frank's first tattoo when he was 16 years old. He nailed it on that one. He always carried himself very well. He was never a snot-nosed kid or disrespectful. He always introduces me as the guy that taught him how to tattoo. This is Frank, this is the guy that taught me everything I know. Shit. I'm one of the most important people on the planet. Seriously, <laughs> think about it, you know what I mean? I taught one of the greatest tattooers of all time how to tattoo. Not too many people can say that. And he just walked in with his brother one day. He's like, he wants to get into this, and you know, right away in my mind, I'm like, okay, gotta get rid of this fucking brat. And I had gotten rid of people in the past by handing them like a tattoo magazine and say, you know, draw 20 things out of this magazine. But this kid, you know, if you know anything about Mike, you know, he ain't a quitter. And that's the thing, like, he just kept coming back. Maybe it was just easier to teach the guy than it was to get rid of him, you know. I went there and he kind of blew me off. I came back. He's like, okay, you want to you wanna learn how to tattoo, take 10 drawings out of a tattoo magazine. Don't trace them, draw them, copy them, and bring them back. So I guess it took me about a month to do 10 drawings. Brought those 10 back, and um, he made me do like another 25 after that. He's like, all right, just kind of just pushing me off. The first time I remember him bringing up tattooing, I think we were in 11th or 12th grade art class, he asked the teacher, I want to apprentice at the shop. They want me to draw 20 of these. Can I spend my time in class redrawing these? And she was fine with it. She said, yeah. So I think that's kind of how he started. Nobody's very good, you know, when they first come in. What he had that was apparent was tenacity. That's probably more important than it being a good artist. In fact, if he was too good, I might have felt threatened and told him, you don't have what it takes. You know, you should probably go home and stay home. Or somebody might beat the fucking shit out of you. This was all the flash I had to trace. Trace that sheet a couple times. Some Mr. Miyagi shit. The guy had an uphill battle from Jump Street, you know. I wasn't going to be convinced that he really wanted it until I couldn't shake him. I just kept putting more and more hurdles in front of him, making the hurdles higher, making them closer together, making it harder and harder for him because Really, all of that, all of the beginning part of the apprenticeship is not to teach him anything. It's to teach me something. How far can I push this guy away and have him still come back? Because that tells me he really wants it. I think that was Frank's 55, but it's souped up there. That's the one I was in the trunk. That's the one we would take to uh, Coney Island High on St. Mark's. He would make me wash his car in the back. And he had like nine cars at one time, and then I would finish one, and then he would bring another one by. Because he lived locally, so he would go grab another car, bring it back, I would wash it, and wax it. Go, man, what does this have to do with tattooing? What were some of your favorite activities to have Mike as an apprentice do? Anything that would humiliate him and break him down. I don't remember laying a hand on him. I really don't. He said one time you guys were just going punch for punch, I think. Me and him? Yeah. I mean, I definitely remember people getting hogtied with lamp cords and stuff. That I clearly remember. I don't know who did it, but I do remember that happening. I remember people being put in a trunk of cars. People got broken down. It's the same theory that the military uses. Break them down and build them up. Strip them down. 
strip them down to nothing and then build a better machine. I just accepted this is how you get into it. You just keep dealing with the bullshit. I didn't really think much about it. I just accepted the fact that this is what I need to do to get my foot in the door and learn how to tattoo. His mentality was tough love, so, you know, he, he put me through a pretty rigorous process. At times, I didn't think I was gonna make it, and, you know, I thought I would have a nervous breakdown. I was 17 years old, so I was, I was a kid. I didn't know anything about life. I, you know, had, hadn't traveled anywhere. And then I meet this maniac, and he's leading the way. He grew up tattooing, fighting, drinking. You know, he was, he was like the epitome of an old school tattooer. You know, he, he was around when it counted. He's one of those guys that when you meet him, you're like, wow, they don't, they don't make guys like this anymore. And you're just happy to have the experience with him. And he's like young and he's full of energy and buying tattoo magazines and he's a sponge and, and I'm from a different, whole different thing. It's like learning if you're Italian, if you're an old school Italian and somebody's trying to teach you French cooking. You know, it just, it's, it's a hard thing that I'm sure to do. At the time, he's looking at all this stuff and he's asking me a million questions and, and I, it's probably very difficult for me to be into talking about that shit because I'm like, fuck him and fuck him and this guy sucked, look at that thing. And then... Bingo, he sees Philip Lou's work. And it's like, he's stepping over my clipboard. <laughs> Can't get out the door fast enough. Like, I need to see more of this. And then he's telling me, he's like, I want to go to Switzerland. That was mind blowing. <laughs> I think I was like, I don't know if you can go to Switzerland, you know? Give us a guy to talk. <laughs> Why not? This is the best part of here, this window. Here on the third floor. So Mike always knew I was interested in traveling and like when he made his appointment with Philip, he just asked me if I wanted to go and I think we went there for four days or five days. You know, I just went for a good time and that's what we had. Philip is a tattooer from Switzerland and at the time I had to contact him but he didn't have a telephone or there was no email back then. So I would write him letters trying to get an appointment and I would receive these beautiful handwritten letters back from his wife, Tatine. And she explained what I would have to do as far as deposits and how far he was booked out in advance. And it just opened my eyes up to a whole new world of how tattooing could be. Da Vinci's was like war and fucking. <laughs> Motorcycles, hot rods, ass kickings, drinking, fighting. And this was like peace, love, happiness. Between staying at his house and being at the studio, he just breathed and lived tattooing and art and the whole family was involved. He took a very smart approach, like everything was very well prepared. His color study, his composition, just everything had a really particular look that I was always drawn to. He had this ability to work with the human body and every tattoo he did, it seemed to look like people were born with the tattoos, like they, they were meant to be there. It was like the weirdest scene ever, but it was awesome, it was so much fun. Felix's dad was there, walking around smoking joints talking to Philip's wife, Tatine. She was doing all these portraits and paintings that she was showing us. Mike got tattooed, I think, and then we'd go out. Do you know the Saturday night in Viva La Switzerland? We're going to what they like to call here as a disco tech. <laughs> and it was like, Philip wouldn't come out, he's very low key, and Tatine would come out with us. But you know, we would just go out, it was like a club or a disco, and we were just drinking and having a good time. You think you have that suit downstairs? <laughs> you can throw it on just to roll around Long Island? <laughs> oh, man. Mike was very young, and he hadn't been, you know, in the tattoo industry for any real length of time before he went to Philip Lou to get tattooed. But that was pretty unique. Most people don't fly to Switzerland to get tattooed when they're, whatever, 18. Or, and that was a good indicator that he had a, 
he had an understanding of what was going on, what was good by going to Philip so young. The exposure to Philip took him to another level, both desire-wise and knowledge-wise. He, I'm sure he was watching Philip like a hawk. He, I'm sure he didn't feel 90% of that tattoo until the spots were really bad because he was just watching every move. The short time you stay there, it's almost like a Harvard education. You, you learn so much about tattooing in a short period of time. Philip has such an influence on and rubs off on you so easily and constructs the ideas of tattooing in a very simplistic way that, that it makes an amateur tattooer understand it easily. He was just hellbent on getting good. I don't know how much of that was Frank or the guys he worked with or getting tattooed by people like Philip, but he just, he was just really able to nail the whole technical side of it pretty quickly. That was a pinnacle moment for me. That changed my whole outlook. Even like technical uh, aspects of it, I came back and tattooed completely different, used different needles that I didn't know existed. It was a, a lot of shit that changed my, my life. Philip brought Mike's ability to another level, his desire to do better. At that point, he's exhausted my capabilities. You know, he's taking everything that I could have taught him and he's, he's maximized it. And now he needs to take another block and stack it on. I took the best of Frank and took the best of me traveling the world and kind of integrated each one, you know. Both worlds collided, you know, they contradicted each other and some aspects of this style tattooing Frank would frown upon. He's like, oh, that's pussy shit. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> but then, you know, I don't know, we'll go back to that. <laughs> awesome.